Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Listen Up. And I want to tell you this, listen up. We have a lot of good stuff we're going to talk about today. My name is Mark Banfield. I am with Ban Faith uh, Systems, specializing in automobile dealership development and inventory management. So what we're going to do today is we've got a panel and we're going to talk about different ways of communicating. We're actually going to take this week, next week, the following week to talk about communicating because this is a pretty big topic. So we're going to talk about the different ways to communicate and how you can maximize your ability to communicate to improve your paycheck, to improve your wallet, to help you close more deals. So that's what we're going to do today. So before we get started, here's what I'd like. I'd like to have a goal. Any of you listening, any of you watching, give us a like. I want to get seven likes today. I, I, I've got a big goal. I want us to get seven. If we can get seven likes, I'm going to go out and buy dinner to everyone in the room with me. So do that. Get them some food. And I do mean in this room, not on the, the video. So whatever. So here we go. So listen up. We're talking about communication. Here are the people that are with me. I'm going to start with Ron Catrania. Ron, give us an introduction on yourself. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome. My name is Ron. I'm a sales trainer, motivational speaker based in South Florida, here to help you help yourself. All right. We're now going to go to Mike Mersman. Mike, give us an intro. Well, hi. Good, good morning. No, good afternoon now, uh, everybody. Uh, Mike Mersman here uh, from Western Ohio. Can't be a Easterner. Um, glad to be here. Uh, we're just going to talk about how you all can do better at what you really want to do, and that's sell, sell things. And we're going to talk to you about what we know works and uh, how you can do it too. All right. Joining us now will be Alex Thayer. Alex? Hello, I'm Alex Thayer from Michigan Dealer Service. Uh, looking forward to today's broadcast on uh, communication and uh, how to do it uh, effectively and efficiently. Great. And finally... Mike or Mark Shinneberry. Mark, you want to give us an intro from your mobile office? Hey, everybody. I'm Mark Shinneberry uh, from calling you from uh, Southeast Michigan here. Uh, looking forward to today's discussion uh, talking about communication. Okay. So here we are. So this is the group. This is the brain trust. So thank you all guys for joining us. I do want to thank you. Um, I know this is lunchtime for not only the people watching, but for us. So let's give them something to chew on that will last longer than that sandwich, you know, that Big Mac they're going to have. So we're talking about communicating, and we just, we decided that we're going to start communicating, um, talking about communication at its heart, which is what people have done naturally. So I want to talk about communicating face-to-face -face in conversation, I want to talk about communicating over the phone, using the phone as the communication channel. And then at the end, I want to talk about um, texting, which is the new way of using the phone to communicate. So let's start with normal conversation. Who would like to start by telling me what are the things you can do to maximize your ability to communicate as you're talking to that someone face-to-face? -face? I'll tell you what you can do more of and do it better and that's, okay, go ahead. that's listening we have a tendency to be talking with somebody anybody and while they're talking we're so busy thinking about what we're going to say next that we don't listen to what's being said to us so i'm going to implore you to make sure that when you go with somebody and they're speaking that you continually acknowledge what they're saying and that's simple Look at them and say to them, I understand. I hear you. Yes, that makes sense. Of course. And just respond so they know you're listening. It's important. That's the, the biggest communication skill I can say we need is better listening skills. If you can listen more effectively, you can communicate more effectively. Okay. Anyone want to add on to that? Can I say something there? Go ahead. That's a really good start, Ron. And what I like is the fact that once you get face to face, then you can use things other than words, body language, eye contact, 
those are the things that make the difference. And they're so powerful, too, because as we're learning, um, doing communicating online with just like we are with webinars and sales and so forth, um, we're missing a lot of the body language. We're missing a lot of the direct eye contact. And those are so powerful tools that we can't forget them and they go back to our skill set. The better we do at this, the more money we're going to make. It's that simple. Absolutely. Good Good talk. Mark and Alex, anything you guys want to add? You know, I, with uh, face-to-face communication, um, your body language is so important in getting across uh, a positive impression to the customer and getting across the point that you're trying to make to them. So, um, and also just uh, listening, um, your body language, even while you're listening, you have to make sure that you're actively engaged in listening. You can't be doing something else while you're listening to somebody, right? So um, I think those are all very important uh, aspects. Okay, Mark. Mark, Mark, this is Ron. I'm sitting here right now and I've got sort of a pose if you're looking at me, what would you think that I'm thinking? You're holding on to your nose. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a sign of pondering or thinking or contemplating. Yeah, pondering. I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, and I'm pondering it. I'm working it in my mind. So watch people. You know, we Take talk your about glasses off if you're wearing, I'm sorry, Ron. <laughs> no, it's, it's critical. So, yes, you're right. Like take so, your glasses off and look at them, okay, and then put your glasses back on and then speak. Okay. So, so one thing I want to want to caution on though is is with this body language and you know whether people are sitting with like this, whether they're thinking like this, taking their glasses off. Different people have different methods and different ways of thinking, so you cannot. Be too, you've got to be careful about that. So you got to pay attention to the person over a little bit of a period of time to get a grip on what they're doing. Because you don't misinterpret body language unless it's truly a negative, hostile body language. Um, what Ron was showing, Mike, what you were showing, those are good things. Not everyone's going to do that, though. So don't assume that they're, if they're not doing it, they're not listening. Okay. Um, that's that's my two cents on that. Before I want to go now, so we've One taken, we, you know, face-to-face -face communication. I think we've all, just by way of being natural humans, have done that over time and have gotten to the point where we're decent. Ron's point at the very beginning about listening is critical. I think that is, I agree, that is probably the key part and the hardest part of listening to someone. But where I want to go now is let's talk about communicating over the phone. Mm. So over the phone, we've eliminated the eye contact, right? So you can't see the person anymore. So what do you have to do now to actually communicate properly? And I'm going to go to Mike first on that. So Mike, give us some tips on telephone usage. Well, okay, thanks. Um one of the first things that you, you have to remember using the telephone is, again, like Mark said, we don't have the body language. Uh, we don't have the eye contact. But what we do have is we need to maintain enthusiasm, and we need to have a game plan. I mean, it's one thing to pick up the phone and call your buddy or your girlfriend or whoever. Uh, that's fine. And that's sort of, okay, I'm not selling anything. But if I want to do business over the telephone, it's really important that I extend my personality uh, to, to its strengths and I can reach out literally, figuratively, uh, to whoever it is that I'm talking to. I need to communicate. I want to listen per, in particular, but I need to have a game plan. So it's okay to write yourself some notes. And if you need to, um, there are different places you can go on the internet to get a free copy of a of a phone worksheet that'll give you some. This is what I need to say. This is my goal here. Uh, I want to extend myself. And whatever you do, 
you want to you want to say communicate with a smile in your voice and the way to do that is put a smile on your face it's really really easy think about this if i picked up the phone uh telephone telephone big phone hello hi grandma yeah this is mike i'm gonna come over to the house i hope you got dinner ready i'll be there in about 20 minutes bye how cool was that okay am i gonna get dinner <laughs> probably get a I get a spatula up beside the head. But if I did something like, hello, Grandma. Yeah, it's Mike. How are you? I'm great. I'm great, too. Yeah, listen, um, can I come over and share your dinner? I'm doing nothing but cooking. I'm out of everything. And I know you guys, this is Friday fish day. Um, you got room for me at the table? I'm so happy. Thank you so much. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Is there anything you need um, I can pick up on the way? Okay. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. All I'm doing is I want to, I got the same agenda. I'm just doing it differently. Okay. And this is really important. And some of us have gone through uh, years of practice on the telephone. But a lot of people haven't because it's, kind of like an old technology, but now it's coming back because we need to use it because we don't have the interface with customers and people like we used to have. Okay. And I was on a, sur I did a survey, I heard a survey last week that said 83% of people that are in the sales business believe that it's going to stay like it is now more than it's ever going to go back to the way it was before COVID. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So I'm going to switch faces real quick. Uh, Mark, you've been awful quiet sitting in the car there. Uh, <laughs> Mike made some great points there. What other things can you do on the phone to replace the body language that you're missing? So I, I'm going to reiterate some of the things that Mike just said. So first off, and I'd have to say this is probably, if not the most important, one of the most important things. Mike, Mike said it smile smile when you're sitting there when you answer the phone if you pick up the phone and you dial smile because that smile comes through the phone Absolutely. you can hear it you can feel it because if you're smiling your body language is going to be a little more relaxed in you know where you're at in person and if you're that person that needs to stand up uh to project yourself when you're talking Stand up. Walk around when you're talking if you need to. And when you're when you're talking to this customer, whether it was a call that you initiated or a call that the customer called you and you you answered, they're going to ask you questions. Listen to their questions that they ask you, and then actually answer their question. And when I say okay. that, I mean, how often have you ever picked up the phone and called someone and asked them uh, a question about a product? For instance, you know, does that uh, does that Ram pickup truck have a V6 or an eight-cylinder engine in it? And then the person on the other end of the phone answers with, uh, when would you like to come look at it? Because they ignored your question and they tried to, they were, this goes back to what Ron was saying earlier about, when we're talking to someone, we're trying to think about what's our next, the next thing we're going to say. Pay attention to your customers. If they ask you a question, actually answer the question. Does that make sense? It does. It does. So I'm going to turn. All right. So we've got the fact. Another question, guys. Does it make sense? Yeah, it does. <laughs> so we've established that even on the phone, body language plays an important part. Our, our inflection, how we say things, putting a smile on our face. Um, I like Mark's point of walk around if that's how you're comfortable because we're, our phones are not tied to our desks like they used to be in, in previous decades, right? We don't have the length of a, of a cord. We can go wherever we want and talk on the phone as Mark is demonstrating today um, by talking to us from his vehicle. Um, but So I'm going to go to Alex now and get a little more specific about this car or not this car, the phone conversation. 
So, Alex, when you start, so you call someone in a business setting as a salesperson, how should you start that call? Um, you know, you got to start the call first um, with a purpose. Why are you calling the customer? You have to make sure that you get to the point of the phone call. What Ron and Mike and Mark are saying is you have to smile and have the attitude and be ready to make that end. Um, you're not processing a customer. You're building your brand, trying to cultivate a relationship with a customer. And so you have to talk to them um, and present yourself uh, in that light. Um, but I think the most, Im I think an important thing is that make sure you have a purpose and you understand why you're calling that customer. Okay. Also, so, can you, yeah, Ron, another point, uh, when you call, when you're calling somebody, take the curse off the call. When they answer the phone, say, hi, Bill, this is Ron. Am I reaching yeah. you at a convenient time? Yeah. Did I interrupt anything? Cause sometimes people are doing other things. So just take the curse off the call, and if they say no, it's fine. Go. Yeah. And no, they that's say a you got to ask is, permission um, to make sure they're not in the middle of something and they have time to well, deal with you. Absolutely. It, if yeah. it isn't a convenient time, then find out what is. Okay. Oh, gee, Ron. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, would it be better if I called you in an hour or whatever? But get a specific time Perfect. to recontact that customer. That gives you permission, and you know what you can do when you need to do it. Perfect. Okay. So, talking face to face, body language is important. Listening is critical. When we're talking on the phone, we still need to use proper body language, we still need to smile. We still need to have that. And when we start the conversation, we need to ask for permission. We need to identify ourselves. Again, we need to be polite, right? And not just call and dive into it. Telemarketers have a bad name because they don't waste any time with the niceties. They get right to it and they, they, they do not let you, you know, their script is built so that you don't have a chance to interrupt them. Um, or without feeling like you're being rude. Don't do that. So here's what I want to go to now for the rest of our time in this session. In today's world, the phone is an important tool. All of us walk around with our phones. All of us feel lost without our phone. If we leave home and leave our phone there, do we just continue to go? No, we turn around and go back and get our phone because we can't. It's like... We're, we're, we're attached to it, addicted to it, whatever. But phones are, are important. But the thing of the, the point I want to ask you guys about now is how do we deal with is the most common way to use a phone today has nothing to do with talking and it has everything to do with texting. Yeah. So, how do we use texting as a communicative channel to sell? So, who, Alex, would you want to start with that one? Sure. Okay. Um, you know, texting uh, is extremely effective, quick. People can uh, respond to it when they have an opportunity, and everybody's checking text messages and responding to them, not necessarily phone calls. So, you know, I, I think it's the same thing as making a phone call. You got to make sure you have a purpose for your text message and be concise and direct um, and courteous with the customer. So um, I guess those are, are my um, tips on text messaging with customers. Um, whatever their, the form of communicating that they want to deal with is um, what you have to jump into. And text messaging is be, um, gaining more and more traction as a way to effectively communicate with your customers. Okay. So Mark, I'm going to turn to you now. What do you want to add about texting protocols? So text messaging by far has become the most popular form of communication, uh, not just between customers and businesses, but between individuals. You know, I, I just can't help but think of, uh, you know, my son. If I want to communicate with my son, I better send him a text message because he's not going to answer the phone. If I call him, 
it'll go to his voicemail. And if I send him a text, he'll respond right away. You know, and a lot of these people, um, it, it really doesn't matter the age now or the, the generation they're in because uh, I even find myself now, I've, I've converted to uh, text messaging, messaging as the easiest form of communication. Because, uh, I'm getting text messages right now while we're live on this broadcast. <laughs> I'm getting text messages. They're popping up. I can, I can actually read them while I'm doing this. And if I wanted to respond, I could. And it's, it's just very efficient and very effective. Um, now, I will, I will just uh, throw this out there because, you know, a lot of you are probably thinking it. Uh, and if not, you should be. You know, when it comes to a business text communicating with a consumer, uh, there are certain federal laws that are in place. So you need to get uh, the consumer's consent to communicate via text. Um, so just keep that in mind because you want to make sure that you know we're, we're following all the uh, proper rules and stuff like that. Uh, but it's a great way to communicate. And you know, whereas email used to be fantastic, you could send somebody an email, give them a message, they respond to it. Um, I, I think it was you, Mark, who said the other day that you have a few thousand emails sitting in your email box that you never you've got a chance to look at because a lot of them were junk. Generally, if you send a text. They're reading it right now. That's and if right. they need to respond, they will. Right. Um, one thing that I'd like to add to that is, is with texting, is you, you kind of have to consider how much information uh, you're sending over in a text. And the more we do it, the more the chances are that you're going to overload the message. So whether it's technical data, uh, financial information, et cetera. Those are things that I don't mind texting, but I'd put it in the file, not just in the words. Okay. So let me ask this question then. So texting again has become the norm. I know with my daughters, I need to text them. They, like, like Mark was saying, they don't answer the phone. Texting is the way to do it. Um, a couple of things I just want to mention. One of the issues with texting is people have gotten used so used to texting now, though. When they text, they want an immediate response. And if you don't send an immediate response to the text, because they kind of know that if your phone's beside you, you get a text, you're going to look at it. They want you to respond to it. And if you don't, they don't like it. Okay? They just don't. They, they want an answer now. So... I'm going to, what I want from you guys now is I'm going to go to each one of you. So you're going to have to think fast on your feet. Give me some no's or some things you do not want to do when you text message. So what are some bad things to do about text message? And I'm actually going to give a volunteer to start. Who wants to go first? Uh, I can go. Okay, Alex, tell me something you don't want to do when you're text messaging. Text message the wrong customer. You got to make sure because the uh, a lot of times if you're doing it in the phone, the customer's name is just the phone number. Your customers can have similar phone numbers, so you have to make sure the right message is going to the right person. Yeah, great point. Okay, Ron, you had your hand up. What do you want to tell us? Yeah, you know, a trailer on what uh, Je uh, Alex just said. You know, it's really critical because I can't tell you how many times I've sent a text to a phone number. And I get a response, who is this? So I think you need to purify your contact list so that you have a name associated with a phone number. Okay. Can I right. can I jump in? You're on. Um, consider this. Okay. Tell me something bad about texting. Well, texting bad. Uh, you got one number goes to, you send a text to that number having information about a vehicle purchase, but it goes to the wife instead of the husband, okay? And she didn't know anything about it. Okay, so you've got to make sure that if it's a, if there are more than, if there's more than one person on the line, <laughs> you got to really be careful what you put out there. Okay. 
All right, so we've established that you've got to make sure you're texting the right person with your information. Mark, I want a different tip. Boy, you're just a slave driver, aren't you? So, I am. Uh, I would say, I would say a, a, a do not with text. Do not send a, a massive text. Don't, don't write a paragraph or a small book and send it to the customer. Keep the text short and sweet. Uh, another thing you don't want to do is do not send multiple multiple texts to send that book. So if you're sending uh, a lot of information, if you have to send a lot of information, first off, send it in one message. Don't send one sentence and then send another sentence, then send another sentence, because every time you do, their phone's dinging. It's, it's, it can become distracting. And if that customer's in a meeting or somewhere where they shouldn't be distracted, uh, it can really become annoying, right? You know, to so bring it back along that process where you send a text and then another text and another text. I do know I've gotten texts from people, and I don't know how they do this. I'll be honest, where the, it's it's a fairly long text, but it does get broken up into to smaller text, but still you get three or four or more in a row. Um, you know, if you're sending that much information to me. I would think that you would want to actually try to use the phone call. Send a text saying, hey, can we talk? I've got a lot to tell you um, versus trying to text it. But again, well, today's well, world to, is about texting. Along, along, along that line, Mark, if your customer prefers texting, that should be the way you prefer to communicate with that customer. Okay. So, Alex, you no were how much information you're sending. You know, yeah, I was going to say, if you have to send a customer a ton of information, um, I would suggest sending an email and texting them, hey, I sent a bunch of information to you, to your email. So make sure you check that out. Um, right. You know, I, for me, text messaging is short and quick like that. If you have something longer, I would suggest uh, just touching base with them. Hey, you have a lot of information in your email that I just sent you. Right, so texting, it, it's not the, the tweeting, the Twitter concept, but keep it short, to the point, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So let me ask you guys about this. I was expecting this to come up sooner, but what about sending a text in all capitals, in all caps? <laughs> and, and I bring that up not because, you know, on the phone here, it's, it's easier to send all lowercase than all caps. But I know service departments in, specific, in particular, if they're using a texting software on their computer, their computers, a lot of them, the, the, especially the legacy ones, Reynolds and ADP, their systems require you to put the letters in as capital letters. And so the, the service manager will have caps on all the time on his computer. And if he goes to send a text, it's coming through as all caps, but what is the deal with all caps? Who wants to who wants to explain that? When you use all text or all uh, uppercase, you're yelling at the person. You're shouting. You're yeah. shouting. So you know you know what people people are just lazy. Back to lazy again because now you got to use your shift key. You know you got to put a capital M, lowercase a. You know people just get lazy. I got a friend down here who owns a restaurant. And it communicates completely in all caps. And every time I say something to him, he says, don't come to my restaurant anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you were starting to say something? <clears throat> well, not really. I, I, I was going to echo really what Ron said. It's, it's, it's yelling. You're, and that's the way it's perceived by most people. Um, you, you just don't want to do that. Pay attention. Besides that, if you, if you have trouble... Uh, Typing, you can always probably use your microphone and have it converted. So there, there is that. So we haven't said that. But again, all these phones, these computers we have in our hands have the ability for dictation. Yeah. To actually say the, the, not only say voice to text, but the text will come through as a voice message. You have the ability to do either or through text Just messages. make sure that you read it before you send it. Absolutely. 
Right. So there's another great tip. Perfect. Don't send a text unless you're absolutely sure it says what you want it to say exactly. and the way you want to say it. Because texts are forever. Right? Sure. People get a text. They keep it in their phone. They've got proof of this conversation from you. Um, so, again, if you're a salesperson negotiating a deal, be careful of what you say. Mark said it earlier. There are laws about contacting the customer. But just in negotiating, don't say something you don't want to be sure you say. So be careful when texting. Um, I tell you one, last funny. Point, one last point I want to ask about real quick before we wrap up. <laughs> um, what about a conversation by way of texting? Because I've been in conversations with people while I'm texting where I'll text something. They'll respond to me. I'll text something back. But before I get done replying to their previous text, they've already sent me another text because they're faster or right. another text because they're faster. Or because Wait I'm a minute. Answering Wait a minute. Is, isn't that normal? Because that happens to me every day. <laughs> so, yeah. So how do you control? How are any guidelines on that process? Mark, you're on the screen. So do you want to talk about that? I, yeah, I, I, I have that. That happens with me. Ser I mean, I was joking around about it, but it's serious. It happens to me every day. And I end up, I end up answering because, of course, there's conver in the conversation, there's questions and answers. I'll end up answering uh, the two or three questions at one time because it took me that long to, uh, to type and to respond. But, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the proper protocol is. I'm just, I just don't type that fast. All right, Ron, go ahead. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, I was talking to someone, texting someone last week, and I happened to have the movie Home Alone on my TV behind me. And it was the part where the guy says, you know, you filthy the animal. And, you know, it was in the movie. And that came on the text. Because it, heard, it heard the TV. So I was oh. cracking up because... Yes. It was exactly what I didn't want to say, but it was it was kind of funny too. So right, so just have so fun. as far as this conversation thing, would it be safe to say from the salesperson we can't control the customer. The customer's going to do what they want, but as the salesperson, would it be safe to say to control it on our end? We need to slow down. And if we slowed down a little bit and gave them a chance to respond, we might get less of a chance of this happening. Sure. I, I, I would agree with that. Absolutely. Okay. Well, this has been a great talk, guys. We're about done with our time. But before we finish up, the tradition is you each get a soapbox moment. You can talk about texting. You can talk about communicating. You can talk about the phone. Or you can talk about whatever you want. This is your chance to just talk and and say what you want to say for everyone to hear. So I'm going to start with on my screen, Ron, you're up first. So you got your soapbox. So I can say anything I want to say? Anything. <laughs> well, Careful, I'm, we're, we're live. I'm That's leaving good. here and I'm taking my car to get the oil changed. And I communicated with the, uh, the Midas Center down here through text. So I'm going there now and I'm going to see if he got the text that I sent saying what I want to have done. Just be careful. Have fun. Remember, the world is critical today of sometimes of things that we don't need to be critical about. Just lighten up. Have a good time. Communicate clearly and smile. Okay. Next on my screen is Alex. Alex, you're on. Excellent. Uh, good discussion today. You know, um, I think uh, keep it in mind when you're face to face with people is good body language, eye contact. Um, when you're making a phone call, um, the same thing. Make sure you smile uh, and you have a purpose for your phone call and text messaging, short, clear, and concise. Um, yeah, it. Uh, the better you can do that, the better uh, you help build your brand and you're more effective with your customers. Okay, very nice. Mike, you're next. I'm next. Well, boy, I tell you what, I'm sitting here thinking with all of this communications going back and forth that in the time that I started in the car business, the only reason I got in the car business at all was 
so that I could help be help people buy the car that they wanted after an experience that I had uh, after my wife and I lived in Georgia for a few years. Um, it was really, really the thing to do, and I'm still doing it. It's just amazing that uh, it all comes back to the skills and doing what you want to do, what makes you happy. And I'm happy, man. This is cool stuff. So glad to be here. Glad to see all you guys and uh, talk to you all next week. Mark, your soapbox. All right. Hope you guys got about 30 minutes. Uh huh. <laughs> sure. Got to run. But uh, all I'm going <laughs> to all I'm going to say is whatever form of communication you're using with the customer. Today we talked about uh, text messaging quite a bit. We talked about face to face. Listen to your customer. Genuinely listen uh, and answer their questions because they will tell you how to sell them a car or a widget for that matter. If you listen to your customer, they will tell you what they need and what they want, and then you can provide that to them. Have a great day. All right, and I will go last. So um, again, we've talked about communicating by way of basically voice today, face-to-face -face conversation, over the phone and text messaging. And they're all vital, they're all important ways to communicate. You need to master each one of those ways. Texting is the, the way to go right now, but it may not always be that way. There may be something further and may come down to where we do video texting, as it were. Um, whatever, pay attention, but get used to it. Do what you need to do. Do it properly. And the key to all of these points, I think, can go back to what Ron said at the very front. Listen. Listen to your customers, and they will tell you what you need to know. So this has been Listen Up. I am Mark Banfield. We're with Banfaith Systems. We are a group. On the screen, you can see how to contact us, the phone number. That is my email. The contact information for the rest of the guys are below their lovely faces. Um, contact them. Reach out to us if you need anything. We will be back next Thursday. We're going to talk about communicating by way of email and newsletters, which kind of go together. So we're going to talk about email communicating and newsletters to get your brand out. And that's what we're going to do next week. So listen up, come back, give us a call, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great, great weekend. Adios. Thanks.